is I've introduced the, uh, in the beginning that we are going on with our course that is development studies and the code is OLW128 and today we are going to cover the fourth part of our course which is uh, dealing much uh, with political systems and development in Africa. Of course what is our intention in studying this part is that we have to see, we have to appraise, we have to evaluate the political developments, the political systems that Africa has passed through up to the moment. Of course there are many arguments that nowadays are raised that Africans did not have any political development at all even before colonization. However, we may use this chance, uh, this session, so that we may be acquainted with the systems. We may be aware of what transpired before colonization, during colonization, and after colonization. The, the, after independence, after many countries in Africa gained independence, they adopted different systems. They adopted, uh, they had adopted different political uh, systems of which they have a lot to tell as far as development is concerned. So at the end of this lecture, you should be able to at least appraise the political systems in pre-colonial Africa. And second, uh, at least you have to be aware and you have to be able to analyze the political systems in colonial Africa. During colonial rule, what were the systems? What were the gov governmental organizations? What were the administrative machineries that were applicable at that time that had an impact in development of African societies? Also, you have to be able to make evaluation of these systems and development after, uh, after colonization, after many countries have uh, attained their independence. What uh, how can we assess them? How can we measure the systems and development as far as they are concerned and their linkage to the development of African countries? And also you have to be able to explore and suggest the possible ways to end the political conflicts in Africa. We are all aware that many African countries are facing different political conflicts. There is political instability in almost uh, uh, in some of the countries and we have to explore, we have to know what's going on there, what uh, is the problem and what should we do now to end these political conflicts that we are experiencing in Africa. So we may use this opportunity to acquaint ourselves of the political systems and development that Africans have passed through to the present time, to the present time. So uh, you will assess yourself at the end of the lecture that uh, if you are able to appraise the political systems that existed in pre-colonial Afri uh, Africa and you are able also to make analysis of them, uh, what has happened in colonial uh, Africa and also in post-colonial Africa, then you'll be able, you'll be in a position to say that you have understood this particular lecture, this particular lecture. So I take this opportunity to follow up with this uh, presentation uh, from the start to the beginning, uh, I mean from the start to the end so that we may be together. Okay, let us start now. Okay, as I've said, it is knowledge area four, it's political systems and development in Africa. Of course, as part of introduction, we are all aware that there are a lot of literature, there are a lot of studies that have been done as far as African political systems are concerned. A lot of persons have written 
uh, about African political systems. A lot of textbooks, a lot of articles, a lot of journal papers, a lot of literature are talking about African political systems. Now we have to ask ourselves, why are they doing so? Why there are many textbooks? Why are they many, uh, uh, there are many literature as far as African political systems are concerned? And there are many, uh, these uh, literature, all these studies have been conducted also by Africans themselves and others have been conducted by non-Africans. So we find out the very essence, the very reason for having many studies about African political system is that Africa itself has a long history of state building. And not only long, it is enriching. It is history that is equipped with varieties of the political forms, varieties of the political systems, varieties of the state buildings, varieties of uh, political values. So because of its enrichment in history, that's why many people have done many researches about African political systems. Of course, there are some of the uh, researches or the studies are saying that maybe Africa did not develop uh, at any point in time before colonization. There are no political developments. There are no political systems at all. Some studies are saying that they were uh, uh, they were very uh, there were many political systems that were applied in uh, Africa even before colonization. When uh, colonial masters came in, they found us with uh, uh, with different political uh, systems, with different governmental systems that we are using at that time, of which they are much more complex, much more soft, uh, sophisticated as compared as, uh, to the European, uh, European political systems. So there are different views as far as political systems in Africa is concerned. Even uh, also uh, on the aspect of development uh, at all. There are other persons who are saying that Africa did not develop at all before colonization. So they are arguing that it is colonization that has impacted Africans to be where they are at the moment. They have been equipped, uh, they have been, uh, these legacies of colonization that uh, continues in Africa that has played a positive role to what we have at the moment. However, there are others who are saying, of course, we did develop even before their arrival. For instance, if you read a book uh, of uh, Walter Rodney, how Europe and developed Africa, you'll find out uh, he has given a good examples of development that partook in Africa even uh, before the arrival of European countries in our land. So there are different lectures, there are different I mean, literatures that are saying uh, on the political systems. And the reason behind is that it has history, it has a reaching history, it has a long and enriching state building character, it has variety of uh, social formations, it has a variety of political formations, that's why people are writing, that's why people are, uh, are researching on African political systems. So this a lecture is going uh, on to cover on the political systems and development in Africa in three uh, period of time before colonization, during colonization. We are going to see all those political developments and systems in Africa in, those, uh, in both uh, both periods in Africa. So. In this lecture, we are going to see these three main aspects. One is political systems in pre-colonial Africa and political systems in colonial 
Africa and also political systems and uh, development in post-colonial Africa. So these are main parts of our lecture. Let us start with the first one. We have to be aware also first of the political systems. What do we mean by what, uh, by saying the political systems? The political systems is, uh, is what we call the systems of governance, the system of leadership, the system of using uh, uh, power in the public affairs, the systems that people apply in electing leaders, in having leadership, in controlling uh, the, uh, the members of the society. So when you are speaking of political systems, uh, it means you are speaking of the governance systems. You are speaking of ruling systems. You are speaking of uh, control. You are speaking of a uh, system of powers that are applied in the, uh, in the public life uh, that some persons in the societies are uh, having power to rule others. Now the systems that are applied, the systems that are devised to enable the particular governance, to enable the particular rulership, to enable the particular governance in the country is what we call political systems. Now, before uh, colonization, what were the types of political systems that we had in Africa? There are of two categories. One is the political system based on a hierarchy. These were the systems which were exercised by the large empires uh, pre-colonial Africa. This was a system of governance which had emperor, which had kings, which had the, the rulers who had the system of bureaucracy in governance of the members of the societies. So they were the hierarchy based political systems uh, were only exercised by the by the large kingdoms in Africa. For instance, take a look of the Buganda Kingdom, uh, the, 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 the uh, Mali Kingdom, and, uh, which was uh, ruled by Mansa, Musa, and other kingdoms that uh, were existing at that time. They were using the hierarchy-based political systems. And the hierarchy-based political systems, it was uh, it was the political system which had centralization of power. All the powers of the state, all the powers of the kingdom, all the powers of the empires were centralized to the kings. So the kings had, uh, say, uh, had, had power to rule throughout the country by using its power. And the powers were only delegated to some few persons who are appointed by the particular king. However, much of that power, much of the powers of the, of the governance were vested to the particular king. So the hierarchy-based political systems were the systems whose societies had, had centralization of power to the kings, to the chiefs, to the emperors, and this was much exercised in the large kingdoms, in the large empires, in the large states that existed in pre-colonial Africa. You find out uh, from the king to the other executive, to the other persons who are executing the functions of the king, those persons who are only delegated the powers from the, uh, from the king. So those delegates did receive the power from the king to carry out different functions in the societies. For instance, the functions of collecting tax, supervising ceremonies, uh, comparing people to, to comply with the king's orders, with the king's commands in the societies. So this, uh, this category was based on the hierarchy political systems. And the other category of political systems that we had in pre-colonial Africa is what we call horizontal political systems. 
Of course, these systems were exercised much in small societies. It had no bureaucracy. And the power within the horizontal political systems were decentralized. The decision making was vested to the people generally. And most of these political systems that existed, yeah. okay? Yeah. A moment. A moment or the, uh, as far as what I know about the the, the political system, the, the first the hierarchy one. What I yes. remember is we have the kingdom and then we have the empires. And okay. uh, the talking of the uh, political system in the societies, I, I I I assume that you are talking of the countries, or you are talking before the division of these. Uh, countries which we now we call Tanzania and Kenya and the rest of that. Oh, you are, to, you are saying that the king, the kingship, for instance, in Tanzania, take Tanganyika, we had Tanganyika before. Do we have a king who was with him, he was more, he was superior than uh, other kings who are uh, actually having their own small portions of the area that they were mandated to. Okay, thank you for that concern. First, when I'm speaking of the hierarchy political systems, we are, see, uh, we are speaking of the political system that existed before the divisions of the, can, uh, of the states into countries that we have today. We are speaking of the systems uh, of the society existed before colonization. The countries that we have today had existed after colonization. It is the impact of colonization. That's why, that's why we, have, uh, we have Tanzania at the moment. We had Tanganyika by then. Now, before Tanganyika, before uh, Kenya, before Uganda, what were the political systems by then? We had no, the, the, the societies were not organized in a country based. We were organized in terms of uh, the societies where that king or where that emperor had exercised, uh, had exercised his rulership or his uh, governance. So when you are speaking of the hierarch political systems, we are speaking of the state uh, of the uh, of the empires of the kingdoms that existed even before uh, before us to become as country that existed before uh, we became tanganyika that existed even before we became tanzania that existed even before uganda came into existence before Uganda came into existence, there are many kingdoms by then. There are many, there are Buganda kingdom and other, other kingdoms that existed in the, particular, in the particular country. So when we are speaking of the political systems at this moment, we are speaking of the uh, systems that based on the empires, on the kingdoms, on the states before colonization. We had not organized ourselves into country-based systems. We had not organized ourselves into the, 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 the present moment, the present form of rulership that we have at the moment. So we are speaking of, uh, of those uh, kingdoms of, uh, of the empires that existed before colonization. And we had not country-based systems. We had not country-based uh, system. For instance, in Tanganyika, there are many kingdoms. For instance, the kingdom, uh, there are many empires, there are many states, uh, the small states which were governed by the particular king or the particular chief of the particular societies. For instance, if you go to Nyamwezi, uh, around Tabora and other places, they, were, they had their own king. If you go to, uh, to, to, to Chaga people, they had their own king. If you go, uh, you come to uh, maybe Hehe people around uh, Southern Highland places, they had their own chief, they had their own kings. 
So we are speaking of those organizations. We are speaking of those, uh, of those systems that existed by then. I think I'm understood. Mtai, Urio. I, I suppose you have you have touched the what I was I was, I was okay. yeah okay thank you now the other category that we are speaking is horizontal political systems these are the political systems that were existed in very small political entities by then they are not organized themselves in uh, tribe based in the societies that had collected had organized themselves into into societies by then of different clans of different tribes so these were political systems whose societies were very had small political entities for instance the the systems that was exercised in clan based societies the persons of the particular clan had their organization, had their rulership, had their governance, at the level of clan. At the, and this organization based on the kinship, not kingship, based on the, on the relations of those persons. Uh, a group of persons who are family, uh, who, had, uh, who are related to each other as, uh, in terms of their families, in terms of their ancestors, before they come into uh, in different tribes, because uh, before they come into different fratries. So the horizontal political systems, we are calling them horizontal because the powers were vested to the majority. The powers were not centralized to one person, to the clan leader only. The powers were vested to the clan members. So me the members of the clan we are sitting together, we are discussing their issues together, we are making the rules to govern themselves together. They had leaders, however, these leaders did not uh, have centralized powers in themselves. They had powers, but those powers were decentralized to the clan members. And automatically, this led to having no bureaucracies. If you have your concern, you reach your concern to the clan leader, and the clan leader uh, calls the meeting, and the meeting is held, all clan members are present, and they discuss on that matter, and then they hold, they make, uh, they, they make resolution upon the matter. And other matters were discussed and were, were decided just by using these uh, clan members. It was not centralized uh, systems of powers. So there were two, there were of two major categories, the hierarchy-based political systems and the horizontal-based political systems. And horizontal was exercised much in the small political entities like clan, like fratries, uh, when I'm saying fratry, it means the collection of clans together. But the hierarchy base was exercised in the, in the kingdoms, in the empires. And a, a kingdom comprised of more than one tribe. There are different tribes uh, who were organized together and were ruled by one chief or by one emperor or by one king by then. So those are the types of... That. Yes. So oh, you mean that hierarchical or by this hierarchy was like centralized state? Was like centralized. It was and this centralized. horizontal was and this horizontal yes. was decentralized. Yes, what, that's what you mean, yeah? Exactly what I'm speaking. Yes. Okay, I've understood. Okay. Okay. Now we have understood, we have seen the, the categories of the political systems that existed in pre-colonial Africa. What was the nature of the societies by then? So that they could have an impact on which system should they use in the governance, in the leadership. 
So the first nature is that in pre-colonial Africa, the societies were of not of the same nature. They had different, there were varieties, they were of different uh, nature, they were of different categories, they were of different characters. African societies had no similar uh, had no similar qualities. They were of different characteristics. Even the organization, uh, the organization, the societies were different because of their differences. That's why the, uh, the system of leadership that was exercised in Buganda Kingdom, in Mali Empire, uh, and which was uh, exercised in, uh, if you go to Southern Africa, the, the Zulu Empire, you find out there are different in terms of uh, the powers that you exercise. They are different in terms of the delegation of the powers. They are different in terms of organization of powers. And the reason behind is that they were of different nature. Nature in terms of their lifestyle, nature in terms of their production activities, nature in terms of the language, nature in terms of the history, nature in terms of, of the technological differences, a technological advancement in the particular societies. That's why you find out there are some empires that was focusing much on the on the uh, on the trade, but there are some empires which were focusing much on on the agricultural uh, activities. It depended much on where they were located at that time. For instance, the Mali Empire. Of course, it was very prominent as far as trans uh, trans-Saharan trade by then. So it uh, focused uh, it focused much on the on the trade activities around that area in Western Africa uh, because of their location, because of the nature uh, of the environment where they were at that moment. So the variation of the environment led to the existence of different political systems in pre-colonial Africa. However, despite of having these varieties, despite having these variations in the societies, most of them, and mind you, most of them, not all, most of them were living in communal-based systems. And uh, these, most of them, were sp I'm speaking, uh, I'm speaking of, of, the, of the small political entities, the clan-based entities, the fratry-based entities, they were living on communal way of life. They were sharing what they were producing in the societies. So even because of the communal way of life, you find out the nature of the, the political systems. Uh, you find out they had either centralized the powers to one thing or they are decentralizing those powers to every member of the society or to every representative of the particular societies. So they were, uh, they had the principles of communalism in, in terms of uh, they were independent, uh, they were self-governing, they were autonomous. For instance, uh, you cannot say that uh, he he, uh, maybe he he kingdom, which was led by, uh, which was under, under leadership of Mkwawa by then, had no control over the rulership or over the empire of Nyamwezi, had no control over the uh, empire of Ghana or, or, or of Buganda, wherever they were. So they were independent in terms of, uh, of their leadership. They were independent in terms of governance. However, this, uh, you take note that it was found in those societies that were exercising the communal way of life. However, there are few exceptions that you find out they did not exercise. They were not living under communal-based uh, societies. For instance, if you go, uh, if you find out the, the city-states which were established by then, for instance, in Tanganyika, by then there were uh, societies in, uh, there were uh, states in Kilwa, 
in Mombasa, they had their uh, own systems of governance and it was not communal based because of the nature of interaction between those places and with the foreigners who were coming by then. You find out that they were, the system of governance was based much more on Mwenyi leadership or what we call the Sultan based leadership because of the nature of the lives, the nature of lifestyle they were using just because of, they were living just because of the interactions of the foreigners by then. And in all that varieties, in whether they were living in a communal way of life, whether they were living under uh, uh, different ways of life, they had, the land was major means of production. The land was, was a valuable resource that they were depending much of their lives. Because of the technologies, because of the, uh, of the science, by then you find out they depended much on the land to have uh, what they could consume by then. So they used the land for agricultural purposes. They used land for different, uh, different activities. However, this land in many of the societies were owned communally. It was owned, you did not find that there was a society that had the ownership of land, had the private ownership of land. Very few societies. However, most of them, they were, land was owned co commonly. Now, this, uh, this is the nature of these uh, pre-colonial uh, societies which affected their systems of governance, which affected their systems of leadership in the societies. But generally, the system of leadership, uh, which you have seen, were categor categorized in two, either decentralized or centralized systems. Uh, that means, I'm saying, uh, in centralized, it, it is what we call the hierarchy-based political systems. And in decentralized, is what we call horizontal political systems. Now, what were the governmental systems by then? Of course, they were in different, uh, they were in three groups. One is what we call, they were centralized empires and kingdoms. These were the large empires. These were the large kingdoms. These kingdoms ha was organized by different tribes. Different tribes were organized together and they had one king and they had one emperor who had the rulership, who had the rulership to all of the tribes by uh, around the area where they did exercise the particular, uh, the particular governance. And examples of these centralized empires or centralized kingdoms, you'll find out in most of them in ancient Egypt, North Africa, the, the people of Nubia, uh, the northern Sudan and Egypt were, were had, uh, had empires uh, which was mainly controlled by one emperor, which were controlled by one king. Also, if you go to uh, to Songhai in West Africa, uh, Mali, Ghana, you find out they were very large kingdom. And the very distinct feature is that they had centralization of power to that king. They had centralization of power to that emperor. And also in, in, in uh, southern parts, in Zimbabwe and even Southern Africa, had these kind of centralized empires and kingdoms. But the other category of the governmental system that existed in pre-colonial Afri uh, Africa is centralized small kingdoms and city-states. I've seen there were large empires which had centralized power, but there were small kingdoms, but they had centralization of power. These kingdoms, these small kingdoms, did exist and were based much on the on the one tribe. They were based much on uh, on uh, different clans who organized together and had one chief or had one uh, one king in that particular tribe or in that particular fratry, as we have said. And there were states or there were governors, 
systems that existed in uh, city states, for instance, in Kilwa, Mombasa, Lamu, in those different uh, uh, places, they had their own system of governance. However, that governance was centralized. That uh, leadership were organized. So different Sofara, uh, Kilwa, Mombasa, Lamu, examples of city states that existed, that had uh, centralized systems of governance, but this centralized system of governance existed in small kingdoms, in these small states by then. And the last category is of the government system is what we call decentralized or stateless political societies. These were societies, uh, of course, uh, of which they had no states. They were not living under kingdoms. They were just living uh, based on the clan-based systems. The different, uh, the protection of the organization of uh, families who are related to each other, and they had their clan leaders who were organizing themselves and taking uh, some of the duties in the societies, of which the power was not centralized to the particular clan leader, of which the power were decentralized to the clan members of the, of the particular clan. And the good examples of the oil empire in West Africa, Ghana, in some, uh, some small clan-based uh, societies that existed in those places. And mind you, decentralized existed much in clan-based societies, while centralized small kingdoms existed in a single tribe. For instance, the tribe of Nyamwezi, the tribe of Hehe, had their systems. But centralized empires were organizing the collection of different tribes. Many tribes were organized together. So the value, the structure, is that centralized existed in uh, organization of many tribes. But centralized small kingdoms existed in a single tribe. And cent uh, decentralized or stateless political societies, these were existed in terms of clan-based clan -based societies. So these are the types of governmental systems. The, the, the government organizations, the political organizations that existed in pre-colonial Africa. But previous part, we have seen the uh, categories of the political systems, the systems of governance. And here we are talking of the organization of the uh, political organizations and government organizations in pre-colonial Africa. In pre-colonial Africa in pre-colonial Africa. So if, uh, you may find out, for instance, this map displays uh, different uh, African kingdoms. Of course, it is not exhaustive, but they were, they were existing by then. You find out in Eastern Africa, you find out Kilwa and other places like Mombasa and Lamu had these uh, empire, had these uh, states, uh, the, the, the city states, but the large empires like Buganda uh, and also Luba and Lunda and DRC Congo and Congo Brazzaville and also in when you go to the Western Africa, you find out the empire like Songhai, Ghana, Mali, Ashant in Western Africa. But in Northern Africa, you find out the ancient Egypt empire, the Kushites empire, the Axum in Ethiopia, the Zulu kingdom in Southern Africa, Mwenemotapa kingdom in uh, Southern Africa. So we had different political systems and we had different governmental organizations in pre-colonial Africa. What happened then when colonization came in? Of course, colonization took place in the uh, 19th century, of course, we did uh, receive the, the, the colonial invasion, different European uh, colonial countries 
the European countries did with aid Africa so that they can have what they were uh, they wanted in societies. They had different, of course, different interests in colonizations. For instance, by then in 19th century, well, there was industrial revolution in, uh, in Europe. Now that industrial revolution necessitated the needs of having the raw materials, the market, the areas of influence in the different uh, societies. So that necessitated for them to come in Africa, to come in different parts of the world so that they may have those their demands. And when colonization took place in Africa, of course, it changed the system, changed the, system uh, the political systems that we had. Of course, they introduced different political systems, the government systems that they wanted and that would suit their needs. For instance, they established indirect rule. Most of the colonial masters, some of them, of course, did not want to, uh, to see them, uh, themselves that they are ruling these African uh, persons. They are ruling these different, uh, these African uh, societies. So what they did, they were using African leaders. They were using the kings. They were using the emperors to rule the African societies. So what they did is to enter the agreement with the kings to enter the agreements with the chiefs, to enter the agreement with the, with the uh, African leaders so that they may be, uh, uh, they may be exercising what the, the, colonial, the uh, colonialists demanded from them. And this existed mass, uh, mostly in the British, existed uh, mostly in the British col uh, colonies in Nigeria, even in Tanganyika before, uh, before First World War. Uh, I mean, after Second World War, uh, most of parts of Tanganyika were ruled by British people. However, their rulership was indirect. It was not direct uh, means of leadership in the, in the country. What they did is just to, call, uh, to, to, to ally with the African leaders and they were seeking demands from African leaders, and African leaders were uh, using those demands to obtain something from the societies so that they may meet uh, the, the demands of white people in, in, uh, in those colonies. So in Tanganyika, in East Africa, especially during the British rule, uh, also in Nigeria, Gold Coast, Ghana, they were in direct rule, which was exercised by the British uh, colonial, uh, the, uh, the, the British country in, in the colonies. However, the other political system that was introduced during colonization is what we call assimilation. It is the system that existed much in the French colonies. The French, what they did is imparting the ideology of French people to the African countries. They wanted to convert Africans so that they may see themselves as French people. So they were, in, in their own sense, they were saying they, were, they wanted to civilize Africans so they could look like the French people. They, uh, so this kind of leadership of which they wanted to use the French colonial government in, in the colonies so that they may convert these people to adhere with what they were demanding, to, what, to adhere what uh, they were interested in the societies is what we call assimilation. And this was much more exercised by the French, uh, I mean, the French country in the colonies. In its uh, so can I interrupt? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so we have been talking about colonization uh, and the British rule, but before that, because you know, since we had German for quite a lot of years, yes. Uh, what um, about uh, their, you know, um, say influence on our political system? Okay, that's good. Good question. Of course, we had even German, but we'll see what Jama did introduce in Africa, what did they introduce? The system of leadership. 
we'll see in a uh, next slide. But this one I was saying, uh, British people introduced the indirect rule. Okay. You find out they introduced the system of leadership of which they did not want themselves to be seen as they were ruling these African countries. What they so, uh, yeah, okay, so it was, uh, <clears throat> if we talk about Tanganyika, okay, how many countries did German uh, invade in Africa? Any idea? Okay, there were many. For instance, before, uh, before the eruption of the First World War, German did colonize Tanganyika, Rwanda, and Burundi. But after the First World War, they were converted to the British, and Rwanda and Burundi was converted to Belgium and oh. to other countries. So German had uh, rulership in Africa, in these countries. However, after the First World War, uh, German was uh, was removed to have colonies in, uh, in Africa because it was suspected to have caused it was uh, it was the source of eruption of first world second war. world war that's yeah why they, uh, that's why they they removed them in mm -hmm. uh, uh, in having colonies in Africa but okay. before that well uh, before first world war German had many colonies in Africa oh thank you sir Okay, so this indirect rule was exercised by British colonies and assimilation was exercised by the French people. German did exercise their rulership by using the direct rule. So they were using uh, German themselves, the German commanders, the, the governor of German in the colony had centralized power, had the power to make, to declare something but to declare something good, had the power to control everything in the societies. So they were using the, uh, uh, they were using the governors who were, uh, who were vested the, the power within the colonies on behalf of the particular colonial country, uh, the colonial, uh, colonialists. So they were using the direct rule. They, they did not want African uh, leaders maybe to use, to, uh, to rule on their behalf. What they did, was to subject even African leaders to be under them, to be their subject. Uh, the African leaders plus their, uh, their, their members of the societies had to be governed by the, the colonial masters. And what they, do, uh, what, uh, what they did, they established the colonial capital, uh, capitals in the particular colonies. And they did build even the, uh, even the state houses uh, in the particular colonies who uh, the, the persons who are governing in the colonies on behalf of German were the governors and these governors were using them uh, the governors were used by the uh, the, the German uh, German state or German uh, government to rule in the colonies on its behalf and not only German also in some parts of the country you find out for instance in uh, in Zimbabwe, uh, which was called Southern Rhodesia by then, it was ruled by direct rule by the British people. So not only was exercised by, by German, also by France, by British, but in some countries, in, uh, in some colonies by then. And this was the, the, the direct way of governance that uh, the colonialists exercised before the colonial Africans. Of course, due to this importation of the political systems, most of the African had, res uh, had different responses to the, particular, to the particular colonial invasion. There are some of the colon uh, colonies that resisted, and there are some of the colonies that accepted because depended on the nature of the rule uh, of the ruling style that the colonial master exercised in the particular colony. But generally, because the colonial invasion took away the interests of African societies and they subjected African interests to, the, uh, uh, to, the, to, the, to their interests, most of the African societies did resist this invasion. However, also they formed 
the different movements so that they may remove the colonial invasion in the countries to have their own independence. That is what we call struggle for independence. So despite the early resistances, of which most of them did fail, but also they established a long-term plan to ensure that they remove the colonial masters in their own colonies. And this kind of resistance, others were warfare-based uh, resistances. Uh, for instance, the, the, the Mau Mau, uh, Mau Mau Wars or Mau Mau, Mau Mau movement in Kenya, uh, which were organized so that to fight the colonial masters in the country. So they had different resistances, but also they had uh, formed the struggle, the long-term plan, so that they may acquire independence from the colonial masters. So the forms of struggle were different. Others were non-violent. For instance, in Tanganyika, we did a uh, struggle for independence in non-violent way. We did form political uh, parties by then. For instance, African Association, Tanganyika African Association, then it, is, uh, it, it was converted to TANU. Then we did gain independence by using the non-violent ways. However, and this non-violent way, of course, did uh, centralize itself for the political changes in the colonial uh, government. They wanted to change the constitutional change in, the, uh, in various uh, uh, colonial uh, uh, government or administration. They, they wanted the changes through their political parties. But there are some countries who did, uh, revo uh, do, uh, did invoke the, the violent way, the, uh, the warfare way to gain their independence. They used the armed struggle. For instance, Mozambique, uh, Zimbabwe, they did employ armed struggle to gain their independence. Now, after gaining independence, most of the African countries resorted to different political systems. Some of the countries were, uh, of course, they used those political parties to gain, uh, to come into leadership. And when they did come into leadership, of course, they Hello. did invoke different, uh, different, the poli uh, different political systems. For instance, uh, in Tanganyika, we did invoke the, the rulership by using single party after Arusha declaration in 1965. Hello? 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 Sorry, sorry. Before that, you have yes. just talked about the, the struggle that the most yes. of African countries has undergone to take in to, to get independence. Yes. And you have mentioned Mau Mau and the rest. Mm -hmm. But does it really mean that we won the, the we won the the fight? And the second question is: Is it that we are actually totally or absolutely out of their power? Okay, very good. Of course, most of the warfare that we did conduct by then, uh, of course, due to uh, poor technology, even organizations uh, between African countries, we did not win in the war struggle, in the, in the fight, we did not win. However, the struggle itself did contribute a lot to the, to the pressure, uh, it, it did pressurize the colonial masters to see that uh, maybe this is not the way to rule these persons. So they granted independence, however, they still, uh, they still uh, uh, remained within the systems that these African countries will be using in the particular, in the particular governance. So in, to answer the second question is that, of course, it is not totally that we are out of their control. That's why nowadays we call we have neocolonialism. They are just controlling us in other way round, not the way they are using in during colonial, uh, colonial, I mean, uh, colonial administration by then. Uh, so I, I think it is, it is because, sir, we, we, it is because, you know, we were made to sign the Commonwealth, uh, you know, uh, agreement. 
is that yeah. the thing yeah because exactly. through commonwealth they tried controlling the african countries despite they got their freedom yes not only that there are many ways of course they oh, okay. uh, for instance, the introduction of the systems of mouth part that of course you want to gain your independence yes let it, uh, every person form his own party so that they may contest through the political uh, avenue and then they want to, uh, you come into the governance however mm -hmm. they may be using these political parties to control us they may yeah, an addition addition of the bill of rights that they wanted at that time which uh, yeah. our president mr julius nyerere refused to primarily to avoid any clashes uh, with the you i mean the un exactly. in future yeah so to respond to what uriya said of course they still have their remnants in us they are still uh, controlling in some way or another but not in the way that we are using during colonization process however after many uh, after african countries did, uh, did gain independence still we did face some political conflicts within ourselves there are civil wars there are boundary conflicts for instance in tanganyika we are uh, uh, tanzania we did our boundary with you in 1978 also there were civil wars in different countries in rwanda in burundi in sierra leone uh, i mean uh, in liberia and other countries of course we did gain the political independence however we did face different political conflicts but the question comes of course we have gained independence why do we have why do we prolong these conflicts why do we have the political conflicts in africa of course there are many reasons for that and you might also have your own reason that you think are the ones that are making us to continue in political conflicts despite the fact that we have political independence i'm saying we have political independence in its strict sense so there are many causes of course there are many co uh, causes uh, of these political conflicts that we have the 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 poverty that we have i mean the ethnicity uh, the tribalism that we exist uh, nowadays for instance the conflicts between hutu and tutsi in uh, in rwanda and burundi did result into civil wars and also the 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 polit the nature of the political leadership by then contribute uh, contribute to the political conflicts that we have in africa so there are many reasons in fact these are not exhaustive ones you may think outside and try to brainstorm the causes of the political conflicts that we have in africa there are many of course these political conflicts that we have are, have impact and these impacts are negatively to uh, our side you find out if we resort into wars uh, we are fighting in civil wars then people are dying then people are losing their places they are, they become displaced we have many refugees we have uh, the, the political instability in the country we have so the the political conflicts that we have create tensions through wars through tensions through these conflicts you find out they have negative impact as far as social economic development government is concerned in africa so the it creates the insecurities it creates the violence that's why we are fighting nowadays there are many rebel groups uh, m23 uh, different uh, for instance we have uh, al shabab group in somalia and other countries we have boko haram in nigeria uh, we have there are many rebel groups there are many that causes the political conflicts in african countries of which have the negative impact to ourselves so the question is what should should be done to avoid political conflicts and that marks the end of my presentation let us brainstorm by using these uh, minutes what do you think what should be done uh, uh, what should be done to avoid the political conflicts that we have in uh in africa nowadays 
हेलो हेलो यस व्हाट शुड वी डू मैडम ओके आई एम सेइंग because of the political conflicts that we have in africa now as a scholar as a student what do you suggest what do you think should be done to end these political conflicts that we have nowadays what sh what should we do anyway i'm giving you a chance so that you may share with what you think might be the proper solutions for uh, for the political conflicts that we have in africa uh, maybe if if heaven is is not responding <laughs> yes maybe may respond I, I get... heaven she's responding at, okay she's muted anyway so let me let me just uh contribute my thought on it uh there is it is a very difficult phenomena to end because okay. as we have seen the conflict uh, as we have seen the conflicts are uh, are always drive on the on the three aspect which is uh Uh, interest and right and the the power and therefore because there are these these elements are still existing in our political uh, scenarios or uh, situations uh, on my view i think it's very hard to end however there are some uh, initiatives which has to be done one is to uh, create uh, Uh, an environment a loving environment a, a conducive environment for each uh, person to contribute his mind his thinking his development aspect and all that and probably if that room will be there of which i also see in the political arena that it will be also very hard to get it as cheap as that however we can still find uh, a way in, uh, in in using uh, different tools including uh, 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 laws uh, like international human rights laws and we have uh, uh, treaties and all this we still have to actually activate uh, or the the use of those uh, treaties and and conventions to try to see how we if we can become free because we are not yet free <laughs> we are yes they are trying to get us yeah so making the right policies okay good yeah. thank you any other we have uh, no. three minutes to time no. any other contribution yes hussein what are you saying on that everybody good morning everybody good morning proceed with what uh yeah, political tension uh, it's very hard for, for for africa to do away with it given uh, uh, the initial circumstances from pro colonialism however in the free means give uh, remaining i can talk of economic dependence africa as a, a continent minus uh, what is economic values white men are still going to rule us left and right what should we do now should we continue like that what should we do i think what uh, so what he means to say is that you know we need to take uh, stop taking the aids and enter into the mass production utilizing our own resources to optimum okay. technology advancement okay is that what you said teacher teacher it? teacher i want to add something concerning the previous speaker okay uh, you, 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 africans 
want conflict, political conflict due to economic economic dependence to these wives. As you see, <clears throat> during this the period of COVID-19, as we we Tanzanian, some of the countries which get do, don't or oh, benefit from the wives used to start hating we Tanzanians because of those things that they get from outside. So okay, our, what should we do? My question is, what should we do? Should we remain like that because we are receiving no. the aid? What we should we do? Yeah. Of course we don't understand okay. ourselves, but we have a lot of wealth in terms of economies that we, in Africans, we can use them well uh, we can eradicate ourselves from no, our sure. dependence to them and we can depend on ourselves rather than depending to them on each and everything okay good what should we do any other person one minute is left any other person? what should we do i'm going to add some I'm going to add more that at least we should stop corruption. I think even corruption is a much problem. I mean, a big problem. Very good. In our country. So we yeah. should stop corruption. Our leaders should stop corruption. They should not be interested on their own. They should even think about us, about citizens, not okay. thinking about themselves. Also, uh, also I can add that the, they should also stop nepotism and severitism. Okay, good. Thank you so much, guys. We are proceeding with this discussion. The same question. The same. We have to think. We have to propose the ways. We have to think on this question. We are going on with the... Uh, with the okay. Solsa. Solsa. Yes? Uh-uh. Okay, as easy. In case of civil war, yes. What you are need to do is to choose the leaders which could solve this problem in our in 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 in, in, in African countries. Are we not choosing leaders? We have them nowadays. We have leaders. We should Yes, yeah, we have we them, but they are them <laughs> Okay, we have, no. we have <laughs> leaders, but like, not all countries. Yeah, okay. Not now, countries. let us go on with this discussion in the group. Eh? I'm told here the time is over. I have to leave.